Welcome everyone to the hill. We're glad to see you this morning. We can stand together. We're going to lift up God and give him praise this morning. You guys ready? Raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. Raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. Raise a hallelujah.
Thank you, Jesus, that you have never lost a battle on our behalf. Lord, all we have to do is stand still, God, and you do it. You do it. We thank you for the signs and wonders, God, but we thank you more for who you are, how much you love us, and all that you've done, Lord, to bring us here in your presence today. Miracles when you move, such an easy thing for you to do. Your hand is moving right now. You are still showing up at the tomb of every Lazarus. Your voice is calling me out. Right now, I know you're able. And my God, come through again. You By the power of the Holy Ghost, a new wind is blowing right now, breaking my heart and soul, taking over like a cherry cold, and my
God, we call on you this morning that you would fill this place, fill our hearts. We thank you. You are the same yesterday, today, forever, that you always are coming through for us, God. And we need your presence. We need you in our lives. I'm calling on the God of Jacob, whose love endures through generations. I know that you will keep your covenant. I'm calling on the God of Moses. The one who opened up the ocean. I need you now to do the same thing for me. For me, for me. Oh God, my God, I need you. Oh God, my God, I need you now. How I Oh, rock, oh, rock of ages, I'm standing on your faithfulness, on your faithfulness. I'm calling on the God of Mary, whose favor rests upon the We're calling on you, God. I'm calling on the God of David, who made a shepherd boy courageous. I may not face Goliath, but I've got my own job. prayers back then and you will answer now you are the same God you are the same God you were providing then you are providing now you're the same God the same God you moved in power then You are a 
God, we need you. Even though sometimes it doesn't feel like you're with us, God. God, we know you're in control. And you came through for us back then. And you are coming through for us now in every single situation, over every sickness. Thank you, God. You freed the captives and you're freeing hearts right. You are the same God. You're the same God. You touch the lepers. You I feel your you touch. touch right. You are the same God. You are the same God. You're the same God. Oh, we need you. How we need you. How we need you. Sing that again, oh God. Oh God, my God, I need you. Oh God, my God, I need you now. Oh rock, oh rock of ages, I'm standing on your faithfulness, on your faithfulness. On your faithfulness Thank you, Lord How we need you And we trust in you I trust in you I trust
God's presence. I know a lot of us here have sicknesses or have relatives and family members who are sick today. And sometimes it doesn't feel like God is with us in our situations. But that's when we worship God, restores our faith and our belief. I have, we have, I have myself, have family members who have cancer right now. And God, we just sing this. We believe you are a healer. You are coming through, God. And I want to invite you just to lift your hands and worship God. You are our healer. You are our strength, our provider. And we believe in you. Oh. Jesus, you're all. Jesus, you're all I need. Jesus, you're all I need. Let's pray together this morning. Thank you, God, that you sent Jesus. And thank you, Jesus, that you brought the kingdom, the kingdom of God, to which there is no end, there is no limit. Thank you, Jesus, for the demonstration of your power because of your love and why you were on earth. And you said greater things will see even that you depart to the Father and send the Holy Spirit. So Holy Spirit, we... Thank you for your presence here today and ask that you would just minister now yes. to every heart and to every life, for the physical pain, the emotional pain. God, for those who feel far off, that today you said if we would just draw near to you, you would draw near to us. God, you never left. Father, we just come seeking your presence and we know that you'll be found. You said if you seek me with all your heart, you'll find me. And so, God, thank you. We seek you today, and we proclaim you are more than enough. You are all we need. 
And God, today, as we sang in that song, I pray that each one of us, God, would just understand that you hold our world in your hands. And there's no better place to be. Because no one, Jesus said, no one can snatch you out of my hand. So thank you, God. And we stand on your promises today. You're a big God. So, Father, we thank you. And I proclaim this verse over each and every person under the sound of my voice. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above and beyond all that we can ask, think, or imagine. To him be the glory now and forever. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Let's celebrate his presence. Put your hands together this morning. And everybody say amen. amen to him who is able, to him who is willing, to him who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. We say glory to you, God. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together and praise his name this morning. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Turn to somebody this morning and welcome them here. You may be seated. And I don't know about you. I don't know about you. I don't know about you. But I know. Well, I'll wait till you're done visiting because you're all talking. You ain't listening to me. <laughs> I'll give you a minute to simmer down. <laughs> you're excited. You're excited to be here. And I'm excited to be here as well. But I just want to say this morning... Um, that, that the songs that we sing, I'm just so grateful. I'm so grateful for the songs that we sing because today I just believe that they were handpicked by Holy Spirit. It's just such a great time to worship. Welcome, everybody. I'm Pastor Scott. Thank you for coming. If this is your first time, we especially want to welcome you here today. We'd love to meet you. Uh, we, we can meet you at the end of the service out in the hallway. There's a hospitality desk there. We'd love to see you out there and welcome you here. All of our friends online, our online campus, thanks for joining us online. We love you guys, and thanks for joining us each and every Sunday. I run into some folks each week that say, oh, I'm, I'm watching online. Well, hi, I know you're there. Welcome. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. As we transition into a giving moment today, I wanted to share a, a verse out of the Old Testament and, uh, you know, we say, oh, we don't, you know, we don't give because of the Old Testament. Well, the principles in the Old Testament, many of them are still the same. Amen. All God's promises are yes and amen. So let's read this verse put up on the screen from First uh, Chronicles chapter 29. David was getting ready to raise money for his son Solomon to build the temple. And he said to the people, uh, actually said to, the God, to God, but who am I and who are my people that we should be able to give as generously as this? For everything comes from you, and we have given you only what comes from your hand. Leave that scripture up there for just a moment. You know, when my kids were young, I used to take them down to the donut shop on Springs Road. Maybe, maybe you've been there. And uh, it's, they've moved since then. But take them to the, get a donut. And, you know, we'd get in the car, I'd buy them a donut. And uh, I'd say, hey, I'd give them the donut. And I'd say, hey, can I have a bite? Can I have a bite of your donut? They go, no. No. No, you can't. Why can't I have a bite of your donut? Because it's mine. And then I'm like, well, wait a minute. Let's just stop a minute. Whose donut is mine? Where'd you get that donut? Well, you gave it to me. So whose donut is it? It's mine. But where'd you get it? You gave it to me. So if I want a bite, can I just have a bite? I don't want the whole donut. I just want a bite. Okay, here, have a bite of my donut, you know. Like I asked them to give me their right arm or something, but, you know, had a bite of the donut. And, you know, when we come to this verse, you know, God wants us to share. He, everything we get comes from him. We can't say about anything we've got, whether it's our money or our talents or possession, whatever we've got, it all came from him. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. And, and all God's saying is, can I have a bite of your donut? He don't want the whole thing, but he wants a bite of your donut. But it's not because he's hungry, and it's not because he doesn't want you to have the whole donut. He's trying to make you generous like he is. And just like David was building a temple, we have an assignment as a church 
to extend the kingdom of God. And one of the ways we do that, it's not only with our words and our witness, but also with our willingness to be generous so that we can create opportunities, be creative to present Jesus to people here, there, and everywhere. And so this morning, consider everything that you have and consider the generosity that God wants to put in you. And the other thing, too, is, is that when we are generous, the Bible tells us that that's like putting seed in the ground. It's just going to come back. It's going to come back. God's not, you can't outgive God. Amen? So let's be generous. Let's pray together. Father, thank you. Thank you for being so generous to us. Thank you for your willingness to give. And thank you because you love us and you want us to be like you. You, you created us in your image. And so, Father, as we give, we're being like you. Make us more like you. In Jesus' name, amen. There's four ways that you can give. If you're here in the room, there are boxes on the wall that you can put your offering in. But perhaps the most convenient way is to go to our app or website, thehillvaleo.com or the Hill Vallejo app, and uh, you can give online. It's easy. It's simple. Or you could bring it in or mail it in. But whatever you do, thanks for your generosity. Amen. God is good. I've got a few things that I want to remind you of this morning before uh, Pastor Fi comes up to give the word. One of the things I need to announce is that we were scheduled, a, t a team was supposed to go to El Salvador tonight, but uh, due to some real staffing problems and issues in El Salvador, we've had to postpone that trip. And so just say a prayer for our friends at King's Castle because a little struggle right now with some um, staff issues and, and mostly illnesses and, 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 and financial needs. But we're, gonna, we're not canceling. We're postponing, and we're going to go. So, but not now. We're going to go a little bit later. But we do have an opportunity for uh, anybody that's interested in going, wants to help at Los Pinos in uh, Camelou or in, in La Mission. Um, this, this October, we're going down to do, actually, we're going to Los Pinos. We're going to be finishing up uh, the construction that needs to be done in order to get that campus complete. And so Heidi and Daniel, the founders, are going to be here on the 22nd of October. Tell us about that. But the 27th, if you want to join us, we're going to spend a week down there, and we're just going to finish up. It's open, but it isn't finished. And so it'll be the time of your life. It'll be great. So email me at info at thehillvaleo.com if you're interested. We can give you more information. But let's get that campus done. Amen? Amen. Today, we want to invite you to sign up for community groups. We started last week. It's not too late. You can still sign up. For our community group, we worship together on Sundays in rows, but as Andy Stanley says, we need to gather in circles because we learn better when we're in circles and community. So come grow in your relationship with God and with one another. Sign up either online, again on the app, or we have sign-up sheets in the back um, on your way out today, but take advantage of that. Don't forget that each and every first, second, third Sunday of the month, we have Growth Track, and that's a time for you to discover more about the faith community here at the Hill, learn about us, we can get to know you, and uh, I think it's a very positive thing for us as a, as a community to be able to spend some time together um, these three weeks to be able to get to know one another better. So join us for that, all right? Would you welcome Pastor Fai as he comes today with more on, I forgot the video. Wait, Pastor Fai is not coming quite yet. Hold your applause. I got one more announcement. Sorry about that. I was on a roll. I was doing pretty good. I was great. Um, we are planning another trip to Israel. <laughs> another trip to Israel. Watch this real quick. We'd love to have you join us.
join us, join us, join us if you can. I'm actually going to tell you about that trip in just a moment here. Um, so I'll, I'll skip the information about the trip. I'll tell you about it in just a moment. But welcome. Um, I couldn't agree more. Uh, Pastor Scott, this morning was... God ordains his praise from us. Those songs that we sing aren't an accident, but it's an opportunity for us to pour out our praise to him no matter where we are. And I believe God meets us exactly where we are. He knows the songs that he wants to put in our hearts because he knows where we're at. And so today, be encouraged that God heard your voice, that God inhabits your praises, that when you lift him up and when you put him first in your praises, when you engage with him, God will meet you right where you are. This month we have been uh, journeying through just one statement that Jesus made. Uh, It's a statement that is very heavy and it's packed, but it's literally just one sentence. And in this one sentence, changes everything. It's a sentence that Jesus spoke about himself. Uh, Here's why we're, we're looking at it this month is because there's so many things that people have to say about Jesus. People say different things. They've encountered him. Some is true. Some is false. Some is somewhere. Um, Some is something that they've heard from other people. But what's important for us to look at is to look at what Jesus actually said about himself. Because when we look at what Jesus said about himself, we can actually get into understanding who Jesus actually was. And we can understand who God is because Jesus says, when you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And so this month, we've been spending time looking at this one statement that Jesus made about himself. And Pastor Scott kicked off this series with these two words that when they are put together, these two words are actually very loaded words that in our Western context and when we read scripture, we tend to miss out about how big these words that Jesus spoke actually were. They're the words, I am, literally three letters but the three letters that would actually change the course of history. Because Jesus, when he speaks these words in the context that he's speaking them in, in the time in which he lived, the people around him understood when he was saying, I am, he was actually equating himself with God himself. The words I am weren't just words, but they were a title that belonged to only God. And so when Jesus says, I am, as Pastor Scott showed us, Jesus is saying, I'm the one. There's no one like me. I am God himself. And last week, we looked into this statement. And before we move further, let's look at what this statement actually says. It's found in John chapter 14, verse 6. Jesus, he's with his disciples, and they've had their last supper. And here's what he says to them. Because he's trying to comfort them after he's told them that he's getting ready to leave them. It says that Jesus answered them and he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through me. And last week we looked at this last part of that scripture where Jesus says, I am the life. And we shared with you some some information and some statistics and this organization that we are partnering with because this year, because we understand that not many people know that Jesus is the life. And Jesus being the life simply means this, is that you have to be alive and living to know the life, that Jesus doesn't just offer you life in eternity, but he offers you a full life now. And the enemy of our soul would come to steal that life from us. But Jesus says, I come to give you life. And I come to give you life to the fullest. And today we're going to look at the second part of that scripture where he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. But we are going to look at what Jesus says when he says, I am the way. Or if you are a Mandalorian fan, you will know that by the end of today that this is the way. Not many Star Wars fans in the house. That's all right. That's all right. My Star Wars fan is in the, in, in the preschool today. 
Earlier this year, as I told you, I was going to share with you a little bit about uh, that trip to Israel. If you have an opportunity to go, I cannot encourage you enough to take time to plan your way to be able to get there. Um, I thank Pastor Scott and Betsy. I, I can't even begin to thank them enough uh, for encouraging me, kicking me, dragging me, uh, punching me, telling me. You have to go to Israel. And every time they would tell me every year, every time, are you going this year? Well, I don't know. You need to go this year. I'm not sure if this is the year. No, you need to go this year. And finally, this last year, we had an opportunity to go. And before we went, Betsy would always tell me, you, you just have to go. And I would just tell her, yeah, I know. I got to go. And she says, no, you don't understand how important it is for you to go on this trip. And as I mentioned last week when we came back, I, I could only tell her you were right. I did not understand the importance of going to see the place where Jesus walked, for walking in his footsteps, for touching the ground that he touched, standing on the mountains that he stood on, riding on a boat in the very sea that he walked on. Nothing like it. So many great places to take in. So many great memories to be made. So many opportunities to connect with God in a way that can't even begin to put into words. So if you can go, I encourage you to go. But while we were on this trip, you see all of these amazing sights. You go to the top of mountains and you see all of these places. You see places where Paul was imprisoned. We got to the old city and you see just how amazing the city is. You get to walk through the marketplaces that Jesus would have walked through. And I remember trying to get out of the city just after noon prayers. And you couldn't even look to your right or to your left because there was people literally on top of you as you were trying to get out of the city. And I just imagined what it was like when Jesus was walking out of the city. One of the coolest places we got to go to was we got to go to a place called Hezekiah's Tunnel. Hezekiah's Tunnel is this tunnel that is about an S shape that is in the old city. And part of this tunnel, the reason why it was built was Hezekiah at the time that he was getting his, his nation, Jerusalem, was getting ready to be attacked and invaded and taken over. Hezekiah dug a tunnel because he said, why should this invading army be able to find, find all of these sources of water? I'm going to divert the water into the city so we can have what we need and not let them have what they need. And so they actually dug this tunnel underground, and it's an S-shape. And we, get it, we got an opportunity to actually walk into the tunnel. But when you go to the tunnel, they prepare you. The water is going to be cold. And I said, I'm from the Bay Area. The water is just cold. So going in a tunnel, it's not, we're good. But they prepare you, bring, bring a change of clothes, bring some water shoes, bring a headlamp because it is dark. We got there. I had everything ready. I was changing, and there was a group that was uh, not going to go through the tunnel, and so they were waiting on the side with all of our stuff. And I looked through my bag, and I realized that I packed a trip to Israel, but I didn't pack my headlamp. And so we got to the tunnel, and it was dark. They weren't lying. And when you step into the tunnel and you feel the water and the water is flowing, you get into the water. The water was cold, like bone chilling cold. And you walk in, but it was awesome. You have to go. It, it. <laughs> but you stepped, in, you stepped into the tunnel and you see all of these people and they're walking through because there's groups that are walking through the tunnel. And our group steps in. And they start walking through the tunnel, and I said, you know what? We're going to be smart. We're going to position ourselves, Cheryl and I, we're going to position ourselves in the middle of the group because if there's somebody in front of me that has a headlamp or there's somebody behind me that has a headlamp, we're, gonna, we're probably going to be okay. And I made sure that my phone was in my pocket because I didn't want my phone to end up in Israel. I wanted it to come home with me. So I wasn't using the flashlight on my phone. And so we were walking through the tunnel. And before you step in, there is a giant, like, overhang that kind of goes in. And you have to duck in. And so we duck in and we start walking. And 
Even with the headlamps on, it is dark. And you're taking steps through. And the only way that you know where you're going is because the people in front of you are either screaming <laughs> or they're yelling, there's a dip, watch your head, move to the left. And even when they're screaming because they've not listened to the people in front of them, or even when they're yelling and you're trying to make sense of all that's taking place, it's still so dark that you hear what they say, but before you know it, you take a step and it's, you, you drop a little bit. And the water, the water's not that high. I'm not that tall. It went to about my shin, so maybe your ankles. It's not bad. But you're still walking in a tunnel that is dark, and when you don't have a light, it makes it that much more scary to walk through. The people that were in front of us were literally leading the way for us. They knew where they were going. At least we prayed that they knew where they were going. <laughs> and as we were following them, we knew that they were okay because they hadn't hit themselves or they hadn't fallen over and they hadn't caused the line to stop. And so we continued to follow the people in front of us. I was grateful because uh, Daniel, who is part of our church, was here in front of me. And Daniel was like about a foot and a half taller than me. And so I knew that if he was cool, I was going to be okay. <laughs> Have you ever been in a place where you knew the destination that you were trying to get to? See, we knew we were trying to get to the end of the tunnel because at the end of the tunnel, we got to see a pool where Jesus would heal people. Yeah. We knew where we were going. We knew where we wanted to get to, but we couldn't see where it was that we were going. Yeah. Have you ever been in a place where you know where you're going, but you don't exactly know how to get there, and so you're dependent on somebody to help show you the way? You're dependent on somebody to make sure that they, knew, they know where they're going that hopefully they got their maps out and they know where they're leading you. A couple of days ago, we were driving home from Walnut Creek and I just remember I made about every possible wrong turn that you can make. I've driven home from Walnut Creek more times than I can count, but I made every wrong turn that I could go and my kids are in the back and Cheryl is in the passenger seat and every wrong turn that I would make, Cheryl would say, where are you going? And in the back seat, I hear my kids, come on, navigator, where are you taking him? <laughs> Have you ever relied on somebody to get you where you need to go? And looking at this statement that Jesus is the way, we have to understand something that when Jesus is saying he is the way, he isn't just saying I am a way, but he is saying I am the way. And when he is saying I am the way, what he is saying is I am the actual literal path. I am the actual literal journey that you must take in order to get to the Father. You have to know that Jesus is your journey. And if he is the path, if he is the journey, if he is the destination, what is the journey and what is it that we need to consider? Today, here is what I want us to consider. If Jesus is the way, then what is the way of Jesus? If Jesus is the path, then what is the path? If Jesus is the journey, then what is the journey? If Jesus is the way, then what is his way? There's a passage that I believe shows us one of the greatest ways to understand and to know the way of Jesus. I'll let you turn to it. It's in Mark chapter 14 in verse 32. And let me just give you a little bit of background before we get to this passage. And Jesus has eaten with his disciples his last supper. He's been in the city. Judas, who was going to betray him, his one of his greatest and closest friends is about to go leave and betray him for 30 pieces of silver. And he feels something in his spirit begin to well up. And he says, we need to, we need to get out of here for, for a moment. And so he literally crosses the road and crosses the valley and he goes to a place called Gethsemane. And he gets to Gethsemane, and here's what it says in Mark chapter 14, beginning in verse 32. It says, they went to a place called Gethsemane. And Jesus said to his disciples, sit here while I pray. 
And he took Peter, James, and John along with him, and he began to be deeply distressed and troubled. My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch. Going a little further, he fell to the ground and he prayed that if possible, the hour might pass from him. Abba, Father, he said, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. Then he returned to his disciples and he found them asleep. They were sleeping. Simon, he said to Peter, are you asleep? Couldn't you keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Once more he went away and he prayed the same thing. When he came back, he again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. They didn't know what to say to him, and I don't blame them. I wouldn't know what to say to Jesus in that moment either. And he goes back a third time to pray. And he returns and he finds them asleep. And when he finds them asleep again, he says, it's too late. My betrayer is here. I'm handed over. This is my hour. This is my time. Here is Jesus who is fully God. As we mentioned in that statement that he says, I am. Jesus, fully God, in an instant could call upon legion of angels. He could call upon the Father to just say, God, you know what? This was good. Hung out with these guys for three years. I learned, did some things. It was good. I think, I think they got it from here. He could, could have said, Father, this is going to cost too much. I don't know if you know, but I'm going to have to have nails driven through my hands. And my feet. Father, I don't know if you know, but they're going to lift me up on a cross. Maybe this is the moment where I, I, I bow out. But this is the moment where we see the words of Paul in Philippians chapter 2 come to life where it says, Jesus did not see equality with God as something to be grasped. But he laid aside everything. And here's simply what that means is that Jesus never stopped being God and he never stopped being human. But what he said was, I'm going to put aside the privileges of being God because I recognize that in this moment, what I am getting ready to do and what I am about to do, I am the only one that can do it. And so I'm not going to access the power of the Father, though I could. I'm not going to access the full power of God, though I could. I'm not going to lay out these people that are coming to arrest me, though I could. But I am going to submit myself to the will of what God the Father wants to do through me. And so in his humanity, it says that he was sorrowful to the point of death. His whole being was shaken up. And he goes and he prays and he asks his friends to pray with him. And his friends couldn't even keep their eyes open because Passover meal was so good. And so here is Jesus, not grasping the full nature of God in that moment, but grasping his total humanity in that moment, sorrowful to the point of death, saying, God, Father, would you take this cup away from me? And yet in that same breath saying, but Father, not what I will, but what you will. Yes. Father, not my way, but your way. Father, not what I want, but what you want. Father, not the way that I see things, but the way that you see things. Father, not my will, but your will. So what is the way of Jesus? The way of Jesus is a journey of surrender. That if we are going to truly follow the path, if we are truly going to follow the way of Jesus and understand what it means to follow Jesus to the fullest, to have the full life that Jesus came to give us, if we are going to understand and know that, what we are going to have to understand is that our life is intended to be a journey of surrender. Yeah.
And he's showing us that to follow his path, we must learn to surrender. If we are going to learn to follow his journey, we're going to have to learn to surrender ourselves to his will and to his way, but not just part of us, all of us. See, Jesus did not compartmentalize that moment of his life and say, you know what, God, Father, I've, I followed you. But in this moment, you know what? I'm going to step back a little bit. I'm not going to surrender to you in this moment. But he completely surrendered to the will of the Father in every part of his life. Even to the point where he was getting ready to die. Even in the point, to the point where he was getting ready to face the most excruciating time of his life. He said, Father, I am going to surrender my will to your will. And if we are going to follow Jesus, if we are going to follow after him in the way that he truly has called us to follow after him, we are going to have to say, Jesus, you can have all of me. You can have every single part of my life. I will surrender every part of me, not just some of me, but all of me. Because, Jesus, I believe your way is better than my way. Because, Jesus, I believe you know better than I know. Because, Jesus, I believe that when I surrender to you, I can have access to the full life that you fully intended me to live. Why? Because I've surrendered to your way, and your way is so much better than my way. Because I don't know about you, but last time that I checked, I am not God. And last time that I checked, neither are you. We've hung out, some of us. And here's what I'm saying is simply this, is that because you and I are not God, we do not know what God knows. We do not see what God sees. We don't have access to the knowledge of what God has for us. We don't know the full path of our life. We just know, God, you are going to illuminate the way one step at a time, and I just got to surrender to what it is that you're illuminating for me. We have to learn to surrender. But it isn't enough to just surrender on a Sunday morning. It isn't enough to just surrender when we're in a group together. It isn't enough to just surrender when we're in a Bible study together. But God calls us to surrender to his way when we're at home. God calls us to surrender to him our will in our way when we're at the workplace. God calls us to surrender to his will and his way when we're in school. God calls us to surrender to him our will and our way when we're trying to make plans for our future. He is calling us to surrender to him because he knows where it is that he wants to take us. And if he is the way, then we should pay attention to his way. If he is the destination, we should pay attention to where it is that he's trying to take us. But the only way that we can fully know that is when we come to a place of surrender. See, Jesus didn't choose to pick and choose when he surrendered. He lived a life of surrender. He's the one that said, Father, I'll go. Father, I'll, I'll be the one. Jesus chose to live a life of surrender. He said, God, I surrender to your plan. I surrender to your purpose because your purpose is what counts. Your way leads to life. So a simple question. If Jesus is the way, if Jesus is the way, and if the way of surrender is what Jesus is calling us to be to become and to live by, if we are to surrender our way to him, how do we do that? How do we live a life of surrender that truly says, God, I want to live my life in a place that I am fully relying on you, that I am trusting you, that I'm surrendered to your way, that I don't even consider my way. I always surrender to you. How do we get to that place? I believe it is exactly in that passage that we see how to live a life of surrender because Jesus demonstrated it to us. At the very beginning of that passage, when Jesus goes to Gethsemane, he doesn't just go to Gethsemane just to go hang out, just to get away, to look at the trees, though the trees there are beautiful. He doesn't just go to hang out. It says 
he goes there and he says to his disciples, sit here while I pray. Jesus learned to live a life of surrender because if you look at the life of Jesus, there are so many times in his gospels that speak to the fact that it says Jesus oftentimes went away to pray. In the very last moments of his life, he is telling his disciples, I am going to go pray. It might be good if you do the same. The way to learn to live a life of surrender is to live the way Jesus did, and that is to live a life of prayer. Jesus lived prayer. He was constantly praying. He was constantly in communion with God the Father. And so because of that, whenever life got hard and it was about to get really hard, he surrendered his will and his way because he was constantly in communion with God and he realized God, I, we're right here. God, I, I, I know. Father, I, I know. We're so connected. And so as I take this step, I'm surrendering to your will because I know your way leads to life. And though it might not make sense to us, that is what Jesus is calling us to. When our will wants to scream loud, when our way wants to tell us you know better, When our way wants to tell us, just go ahead. It'll be okay. You don't got to listen to what God is telling you. You got this. We have to learn to say, God, I've been such in communion with you. I've spent so much time with you. I've sat at your feet. I've prayed. I have prayed. I've prayed. I've surrendered. I've asked you to take out all of the confusion. I've asked you to take out anything that is against your will and your way and your purpose for my life. God, I'm going to take a step knowing that I've surrendered to you. And if I've surrendered to you, you are going to lead me to the Father. Father, you are going to lead me in your ways. Why? Because I know, I've learned that it's not about my way. And if we're honest, we like our way. But God's way is so much better. And so today, as I asked you how is it that we get to a place of surrender it's by stepping into a place of prayer continuously and constantly because that is the way that Jesus lived he learned to live and surrender by living in a place of prayer let me ask you this question what is God calling you to surrender to is it your future plans is it where you might Take your next step. Is it the next job that you're looking for? You're saying, well, you you don't know my job. You don't know the people I've got to deal with. No, but God knows what he's doing with you through that place. God knows what he's trying to teach you in that place. So as we come to a close, I'm going to ask you to stand with me. I'm going to ask you to bow your heads with me for just a moment. I want to ask you this question just between you and God, not the person next to you. What is God asking you to let go of today? What is he asking you to surrender to so that you can fully follow in his ways today? What areas of your life have you not allowed God full access to? Where is God calling you to a place of prayer so that you can begin to journey with him to the destination that only he knows where he wants to take you? What is it that you need to surrender today to say, God, I've tried it my way. God, I've done this and I've done that and I've tried to reach you and I've tried to be a good person. But God, every time I try to do this on my own, I fall flat on my face. What is God calling you to let go of and surrender today? 
Can I tell you the answer will come in your prayers? The answer will come as you seek him, as you seek his way, as you seek his path, as you seek him as the journey and the destination. Is it the next step you're taking? Is it the job you're in? Is it the relationship that you're trying to mend or heal? What is it that God is saying, I need you to surrender this to me so you can begin to live the full life that I intended for you to live, not just in eternity, but right now. Because he is the way. And his way is so much better. Let's pray, Heavenly Father, today we come to you. We humble ourselves to you, God. Just as Jesus did in the garden where he came to you and he said, Lord, what we are going through, God, if it can pass, let it pass. But ultimately, Lord, we just want your way. God, we want your will to be done in our lives. We want to follow after you. And Lord, today, if there's anybody under the sound of my voice who says, I I don't even know what that means to follow after Jesus Today, would you let them know that you are opening up the way for them to follow you, that you are calling them to come after you, and that it isn't something difficult or hard that they have to do. You welcome them where they are, but you promise them not to leave them the way they are, but to transform them and change them more to be like you. And so, God, if it's the first time that they're willing to take a step onto your path today, would you welcome them home? And God, would you let them know that just receiving you is the first step onto the journey of surrendering to your way. And so, Lord, today, if there's anybody under my voice that hasn't received you today, God, would would you let them receive you in their heart? Believe in you as the author and the finisher of their life and their faith. Believe in you as the creator of their God, their sustainer. And God, today, if there's anything inside of us that is not fully surrendered to your will and your way, would you teach us, Lord, to be more like Jesus, that we wouldn't compartmentalize who you are, that we wouldn't just follow you in one part of our life but not another, but we would follow you in every part of our life. That, God, we would surrender and submit to your will for our lives because we know that your way is so much better than ours. God, would you teach us to be like Jesus? Would you teach us to be like Jesus who could say, even in the most difficult moment of his life, God, not my will, but your will. And, God, wherever we find ourselves today, would you open our eyes and open our hearts to know, God, that you aren't going to lead us to a place that isn't more, isn't making us more like you, God, but you were leading us to a place where we can find you more and more and more. We can be transformed to be more into your image. And so, God, today, help us to surrender whatever it is, whatever we are going through, whether it's a relationship, whether it's a job, whether it's the future, whether it's fear of the unknown, God, whether it is pain, whether it is hurt, would you help us to surrender it all to you today? And God, today, like Jesus prayed, not our will, not our will, but your will be done in our lives from this moment forward. God, we choose to follow after you. May your will be done, we ask. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. As the service comes to a close, if you need prayer, there's something that you need to surrender, you need to let go of. This place is open for you to pray and seek God and surrender. There will be people here to pray with you. Be sure to sign up for a group, get connected, find find people to connect with. But God bless you. Know that God's way is a good way. Have a wonderful week.